This is a summary video to help you revise mitosis for the Leaving Cert. Mitosis fits with cell continuity. All cells arise from other similar pre-existing cells as put forward by Rudolf Virchow, so these cheek cells must have arisen from other pre-existing cheek cells. So what is mitosis? It's a form of nuclear division. It's how one parent nucleus will give rise to two identical daughter nuclei, and they are identical because they contain exactly the same DNA. So this really involves making sure that the genetic material of the parent nucleus is copied correctly and the exact number of chromosomes are passed into each of these newly formed nuclei. Any question on mitosis requires you to know this diagram. It's one chromosome and basically this is much coiled DNA wrapped around many histone proteins and this is an alternative diagram but you can see on both there is a special area it's a nipped in region known as the centromere and it's basically an area where the DNA has repeated sequences and it plays a very important role in mitosis. It's really important that you recognize a duplicated chromosome diagram. Remember, two copies of all chromosomes are needed for mitosis. So this is what it looks like. There's one copy on the left and another on the right. And each copy is known as a sister chromatid. And it's very important that you know the phrase sister chromatid. So where in the cell cycle does mitosis fit? Well, the longest part of the cycle is known as interphase, and for most of this time, the cell is just doing normal cell processes. It's towards the end of interphase that the cell begins to prepare for mitosis, and you can see mitosis is marked here by the green section of the graph, followed by cell division, the yellow part, which is otherwise known as cytokinesis. During interphase, many biomolecules would be produced. These include nucleic acids, such as RNA and DNA, proteins and many different carbohydrates. Late in interphase, the cell prepares itself or readies itself for the events of mitosis. So the DNA is duplicated, ensuring there's two copies. Organelles are replicated, like mitochondria and chloroplasts, ensuring there's extra sets for those new cells that will be produced. And as well as that, the cell produces a lot more ATP because a lot of energy is going to be needed for mitosis. So by the end of interphase, all of the preparations are fully completed. The cell is ready for mitosis. It has extra organelles, the chromosomes have duplicated, and centrioles made up of these microtubules have duplicated and there are now two pairs. These will move to opposite poles of the cell and the spindle fibres will form between them. So this leads on to the four stages of mitosis. And to remember each of the four stages, I always say Pippa must always talk. There's prophase metaphase, anaphase and telophase. The first stage of mitosis is prophase and we'll divide it into early and late prophase. So in early prophase the chromosomes are beginning to condense, they're becoming visible, the two centrioles are present and they're beginning to migrate to opposite poles of the cell, the nuclear membrane is beginning to break down and the nucleolus is less visible. To recognise a diagram of early prophase, look for the spindle fibres beginning to form and the appearance of the centrioles. In late prophase, the chromosomes consisting of those pairs of sister chromatids are now fully condensed and visible, the nuclear membrane has broken down, the nucleolus has disappeared and spindle fibres have formed and extend from both centrioles through the cell. So let's examine the diagram for late prophase. The first thing you notice is that you can actually see chromosomes and each one is made up of a pair of sister chromatids. The spindle fibres are also now fully visible and they are extending from centrioles at both poles. So next we have metaphase. Think of M for metaphase and the M in middle because these chromosomes, which consist of pairs of sister chromatids, are lined up or positioned along the middle of the cell and there are spindle fibres coming down from each pole attached to both sides of each chromosome at the centromere. Metaphase is easy to identify because the chromosomes are meeting in the middle or they're lining up across the middle of the cell and there's spindle fibres attached to either side of the centromeres. The next stage is anaphase, and just think of A for a way, that's how you're going to remember anaphase. So you'll remember previously in metaphase, those chromosomes consisting of those pairs of sister chromatids were lining up across the middle of the cell with spindle fibres attached to each centromere. Well now those chromosomes are going to separate those pairs of sister chromatids to become daughter chromosomes and they're pulled to opposite poles of the cell. 
So how do you identify anaphase? Well, it's those pairs of sister chromatids pulled apart to now form daughter chromosomes and they are single leafed. That's how you'll identify them. They are going to be pulled by those contracting spindle fibres to opposite poles of the cell. The last stage of mitosis is telophase and it's the easiest to recognise. You can see that there are no longer any spindle fibres, they've disappeared. You can see the nuclear membranes beginning to form around two new nuclei. Chromosomes are no longer condensed. The nucleoli also reappear and notice the shape of the cell. It's preparing for the separation of the cytoplasm, cell division. So let's take a look at telophase. The first thing you notice is that there are no chromosomes visible, no distinctive chromosomes. They are no longer condensed. The second thing is the appearance of two new nuclear membranes. The third thing is the disappearance or the absence of spindle fibres. And finally, you can notice that the cytoplasm is beginning to pinch. The cell is preparing to divide cytokinesis. Cell division or cytokinesis follows mitosis. This is where those two newly formed nuclei are going to be separated into their own individual cells. The cytoplasm simply pinches, it develops a cleavage furrow and basically splits into two brand new cells. With plant cells, things are a little bit more complex because you have to build a cell wall as well as cell membranes. So basically these vesicles containing all the substances or the materials needed for the new cell walls and cell membranes line up along the equator of the cell, separating the two new nuclei. They fuse to form a cell plate and what develops either side of this cell plate are the new cell walls and the new cell membranes. Separating and supporting these newly formed cell walls is the structure known as the middle lamella and it's one of the reasons why plants need calcium. Two terms which you need to know are haploid and diploid. Haploid means one set of chromosomes in the nucleus of the cell and it's denoted by a lowercase n. Diploid means two sets of chromosomes in the nucleus of the cell and it's denoted with a 2 followed by a lowercase n. Very often in the exam, you're presented with pictures such as this and you're asked what is the diploid number. Well, it's diploid, so you begin with 2n equals 2 and in this case it's 6 because we can circle 6 individual chromosomes. In this case, it's diploid, so it's 2n equals to 4 and it's 4 because we can circle 4 individual chromosomes. And you'll notice from these pictures that it is prophase. It's a good idea to be able to compare mitosis with that other form of nuclear division, meiosis. Mitosis maintains chromosomal number, whereas meiosis halves chromosomal number and we've encountered gamete formation diploid to haploid. Mitosis involves those somatic cells, whereas meiosis is involved in gamete formation. Mitosis produces two identical daughter nuclei, whereas meiosis produces four daughter nuclei and they are not identical. Mitosis produces genetic clones, whereas meiosis is very important for introducing genetic variation. What's the function of mitosis in unicellular or single-celled organisms? It's a means of increasing numbers. And what is the function of mitosis in multicellular organisms? Well, it's growth and also repair. What is cancer? Well, cancer is when mitosis is happening too fast and too often in certain cells. So the rate and the number of mitotic divisions is uncontrolled. This can happen when cells acquire or develop genetic mutations. And so mitosis goes uncontrolled. These cells divide and divide to form a mass known as a tumour. And if they stay in place, they're classed as benign. But if they invade other tissues, they're termed malignant. And malignant cells are associated with cancer cancer. Cancer causing agents are known as carcinogens and key examples would be x-ray radiation, UV radiation, certain viruses and the chemicals in cigarette smoke. So that was mitosis. The most important thing is that you know the four stages of mitosis. Pippa must always talk. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Make sure you can label the diagrams and give a few points on each of those stages. This video includes icons from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I still wish to credit all of these artists. As always, I wish you the very best of luck with your revision and your exams. And you know that these videos are not meant to replace any textbook, nor are they ever meant to replace your teacher's guidance. They are not made for monetary gain, nor are they intended for commercial use. Good luck.